welcome to Inside Lemonster. My name is Dean Mazzarol, the mayor for the city of Lemonster. And, uh, well, we're still on uh, remote uh, taped version because uh, LTV is getting a new studio. And so today our show is being filled from emergency management right here at 37 Carter Street. See, it's embedded in the brain. <laughs> Jim LeBlanc, no stranger to the show. He's the director here at emergency management. And, uh, yeah, we want to get a chance to um, stop down. And it's been a, a, a little bit, Jim, that we've yeah. actually been here. We're in the, in the middle of COVID. We were here, like, all the time, like, yes, we day in and day out, seven yeah. days a week. Yeah. But I really wanted to highlight um, the good work of not only yourself and Deb as two of the, as the full-time employees here, but the the vast network of volunteers that you've built. And over, the, over time now, since COVID, um, either people had, you know, were out of work, or, but wanted to find a way to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And so you've, you've, you've recruited some new volunteers. Yeah, about 13 new people. 13, with, all with vast sort of uh, backgrounds and bring Am Amazing backgrounds. Experiences. <laughs> and they're volunteers. All volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, one, one of them was, um, he was working in the communication almost like six days a week. And come to find out, he was actually at work in the COVID uh, vaccine. Really? He was, op working on he, he was operating from here. Yep. As I looked over his shoulder, he says, looks like you're kind of a um, scientific person with all those formulas. He goes, well, yeah, I, he was working for, what, was it Moderna? Yeah. And uh, he was actually working on the vaccine, but he was working from here because he was working remote. Right, right. The same time he was so he remote, could fill in and he filled in with him. Wow, isn't that remarkable? <laughs> yeah. Our community, I, I'm, every day, uh, there's another contact. You find out, that's why I love people's stories, because oh, yeah. not just because I want to tap them to help us out, but <laughs> I, I enjoy people's stories because um, a lot of people have moved here from other places. And yes. so. Um, mm -hmm. It, it, you know, we both know a lot of people, and we know a lot of people and what they do. Mm -hmm. But then there are a whole lot of people that we have no clue what some of these people do. And, and um, COVID was certainly something that, for me, whether it was a school issue or a, a, mm -hmm. any, or what are the numbers or whatever it might be, um, brought out the amount of talent <laughs> that's here it's, in this community. I'm like, it's it's amazing. Yeah. The in, in fact, it's the. the the feeding program that we've got going on in the city of Lumber is, is amazing. We got about eight people that volunteer every other day, delivering about 1,100 meals to all of the students that can't, that need the, need the feeding, and uh, elderly that can't get out. And uh, I, I'm just blown away by the uh, the attitudes, how good it is, and how consistent they are. And this has been since February that they do this continually. In fact, we had one couple actually cancel their trip across the country because they felt the need was great. They, they enjoyed seeing the people getting the, the, you know, the food, and uh, they're still at it. Our office, I mean, obviously, if you've been there for 27 years, you know a lot of people. A lot of people have good experiences. Mm -hmm. So they just say, you know what, I'll just call the mayor's office. They've always been responsive. Mm -hmm. They get back to me. That seems to, why not go right to the top and get this problem straight? No, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. a good thing, and that's fine. That's yeah. what we enjoy. But I have, we have not received one piece of criticism about not being able to access food. And, and mm -hmm. I'm reading these mm -hmm. horror stories from you know, these, these trade publications that we get. And now they're all electronics and mm -hmm. they're, not, you know, they're not in magazine form anymore. So they can, they can send out articles every day of the week. And they do. And these horror stories about people not being able to get food, and and and, mm -hmm. and I thought to myself, we haven't got the network of of emergency management and some of the churches and Ginny's and uh, Catholic Charities is up the street now, yep. just literally a, oh, a yeah, stone right throw up. over that hill, <laughs> right, and, right up the street, and um, all these different agencies and United Way and and so United Way sort of. Push, pushing their resources over to other agencies, which help us, Worcester County Food Bank. There hasn't been one, I mean, seamless. And, and you hear me on every day on our morning yeah. update, I'm like, hey, if you need anything, call us at 534-7500, uh, extension zero. And if you can't get to it, we'll get it to you. And not one piece of criticism other than, not criticism, but just 
you know, this has been going on now. Those volunteers oh, yeah, since volunteered for what, what they thought was going to be February, two or yeah. three weeks. Oh, yeah. They're still out there. Like I see still... them in the EMA bus there in the van. I'm like, they're, they're still uh, out they're, here. They're running th three and four vehicles every other day getting these people fed. And then Bob, the uh, chef at the high school, uh, basically said there's no other city in Massachusetts that they know of that's pushing out food to this level of anywhere. And the important part is that people might be able to access food, but it not, might not always be the healthiest choices. Oh, true. And, um, I mean, if you stop at a quick gas station, get your gas, you run inside because you're traveling, and you want to grab something, there, there's very few things in there that right. are healthy, right? Yeah, I mean, they're just true. not. And so yeah. there's, there's food, and then there's sort of healthier options. In yeah, these are all healthy foods. I, I've seen them come back here once in a while with just like a few pieces left. And that's good stuff. Yeah, they put fruits and, and, oh, yeah. and you know, apples and fruit and, and uh, you know, baked chips with, you know, but rather than, you know, fried. They get uh, milk, chocolate milk, yeah, yeah. orange but juice. it's all healthy. It's all no healthy. fat and all, oh, all yeah, of that. It's, oh, yeah, 1% milk. <laughs> so how does it work? Because I was, uh, Bob from Chatwell was on with us Tuesday night at a school committee meeting. Yeah. Uh, do they, who staffs the two apartment complexes, Riverside and uh, Silverleaf? Th those right now, I mean, as far as food goes? Yeah. They, they have a staff there, and when we come up with the food, you know, on the bus or whatever, uh, they're waiting for us, and we distribute the food. So you bring and the food. They, we bring the food. And, and they, they have somebody and there. And they have somebody right there okay. distributing it. All right, that's interesting. And yeah. so it's made it clear. I didn't want to clog up the meeting the other night, yeah. but that's yeah. how we thought it worked. Yeah. So, it, 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 and, and then let's move to the other piece, which is at Ginny's. They have a really good system set up where yep. you call that phone number, and then mm -hmm. they'll and they'll get what you need, Yep. and then you go to the side door so you're not, right. there's no and, interaction. And, and, and for the person that can't get out, Ginny's will call us and we'll help them out. Right, and you can just deliver those. Yep. Mm -hmm. This has been going on now since second week of February. <laughs> it's, it's, it's September. It's, you, you got that right. Yeah, I'm it's amazed a long that, time. And, they, and if you come in and see the people's attitude, they're smiling and laughing, yeah. they're looking forward to the next it's, run. It is just wonderful that yeah. we've got such great volunteers here oh, yeah. uh, who feel that need. And Highly motivated. Very much so. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> so let's, uh, and, and I want to talk a little bit about the recruitment part because um, people do find themselves in a situation mm -hmm. where they're retiring, retiring early. Mm -hmm. out, whatever the circumstance might be, maybe in their life, they've, you know, their kids are older now, and they're like, mm -hmm. okay, I've got a little bit of time. And I see the reaction from those who come here to say, hey, I'll give a few hours. And then the next thing is like, that was so, that was so fu you know, fulfilling to, to me personally, right? Oh, yeah. One of, the, one of the women on the bus runs with the food, she's a retired meal deliverer. She loves doing this. Right. She's, all, she's all set up. <laughs> she's ready. But it, so there are many opportunities here. Yeah. It, 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 emergency management is sort of the umbrella for many functions, interactive yeah. between public safety here yeah. in the city. And then if there's a disaster, obviously emergency oh, yeah. management pretty much is the, 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 the single point of entry, so to speak. Yeah. In fact, this, this whole room in 2008, as you know, as you were here at 2 o'clock in the morning when we were organizing that whole response, this, this room here, the Emergency Operations Center, was key to why the state thought, remember that? The, yeah. the governor came I here because he says, the door and said, he says the I think the storm went by here. Yeah, I remember him coming in saying, a little embarrassed, you guys are more prepared than we are, kind of, right? That That's, was kind of funny. But that, it was. It, it's, it's, uh, and then 2015, when we had yep. all those snowstorms, I mean, mm -hmm. it just never ended and and uh, yeah. so this again became our hub for coordination but right. and so we built it for that reason and others but it's really become a multi-purpose center a, a training center for it's a training center for, as you saw right just in now, there today the amphitheater is in full use been used yesterday was seven in the morning to 11 last night police department with their trainings Amazing. it's like this every day yeah and and uh, that's why i said we thought we were setting up you know we had ideas like we need this this is Pivotal. Yeah. When you have so many different departments, it's and National Grid, and, and uh, at the time it was Mass mm -hmm. Electric at the time, and National yeah. Grid, Grid did gas, and Boston Gas, two different companies. And then you have, you know, all these other outside agencies, FEMA mm -hmm. and MEMA, and you've got just so many pieces to the puzzle here. And to have that face-to-face -face interaction, have one place where we can 
we, we can meet, and this is a very long table here, where we can meet and put a plan together face to face. We all have each other's cell phone numbers. Yeah. It makes it makes recovery so much faster and, and, we, and easier. We talk about this table. Uh, the industry in Lemister is amazing. All this furniture you see around yep. here is all donated by AIS. Yeah, when Bruce Botsman called me from AIS, he says, "Hey, we've got a, we're um, <laughs> shifting models in our yeah. display area, and I've got this this uh, eighteen uh, feet long yeah, table." Yeah, well, I didn't say eighteen feet, but he said, "But I have this conference table. Anybody you think would be interested?" I said, "Oh yeah, we could use one at the emergency management. We had sort of a leftover of leftover yeah. surplus of the surplus." And he said, "Okay." And then next thing I know, you said, "Did you see? Do you know what he's sending us?" And I said, "I don't know. A conference table and some and uh, chairs." And and then when I came down here and saw all the other pieces, oh, yeah, the credentials, <laughs> all the other pieces that came with it, I'm like, oh, yeah, "This it's was it's amazing. An expensive piece of equipment here. Oh yeah, About ten grand. Yeah, and we're fortunate. And, and there's no business that ever says no. Even when no. you worked at Foster Tech, if there was anything yeah. we needed, but. You know, you, you know, mechanical companies around here, the suppliers. If there's oh, yeah. anything that we need, they know. They know what happens down here. Yeah, and this COVID thing brought a lot of that out. A lot of them uh, felt that you know some big cases. Next thing you know, I had a skid of a skid of cases. Mm. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. No, I think it's it's what helps. And there, and, and I think the great part is, you know, I talked to other mayors across the state, and and, and even other states. And they often feel disconnected with the businesses that are there because mm -hmm. they many times will be located near the highway. You know, the CEO and the people that work there come from other towns or cities. They go to work. Mm -hmm. You don't see them at the ball field. You don't see them up at Hannaford. You don't see them at Market Basket, at the festivals or anything. Mm -hmm. And wonderful thing about Lemonster still is that we know the people that own these businesses, oh, yeah, they know well. us, mm -hmm. we have that great interaction, we've built a good rapport with them. Absolutely. And, and, and that comes out in the long run. And I've talked to so many mayors who are like, yeah, we can't even get to see these people. You know, there might be a, a chamber meeting that, you know, they'll send somebody, but usually it's not the person that, that you can pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I, I need this, can you oh, yeah. help me with this? The industry's been awesome. The other thing we got here too is, uh, because of COVID, we created an office for MEMA I have a regional uh, director that comes here twice a week. Right. So that, and he stays in his office and he operates from here. From here. Mm. So that's our new connection is we become a regional office, yep. not just a, a, a local emergency oh, no. management agency. Yeah, we're, we're working right now to be a regional uh, pod, which is point of distribution for the state because of our central location. So when things happen, yeah. this will be the central location and the materials yeah. will come in and then be distributed out. In fact, um, as you know, in the 2008 ISOM, we had the National Guard operator from here. Right. The Boston Ambulance team was out front, and we dispatched to all the area cities and towns. Yeah. And during COVID, we actually had the all of the masks and a lot of things were distributed. Right from here. Right from here to all the area towns. And then we were very fortunate with the philanthropists, as yeah. you know very well. We we gave out 46,000 masks. I told him, I, you know, I was on a conversation the other day <laughs> in, a, in a call with him, and I said, <clears throat> if, if you're looking for a way to measure this, um, first of all, nobody was set up. Now, other communities eventually got those masks, but nobody gave out 46,000 of these masks. He said the closest was two to 3,000 in the other towns. That's he says, you did 46,000. Right. They couldn't get them out, and they right. weren't set up to. And I think part of our success was getting the mask, but also training people, letting yeah. them know how, how to, to use, use the mask, why it was so important to use the mask, and, and, and then setting up in central locations. Right, we did two locations here in City Hall, right. and I think one key was your daily TV broadcast mm -hmm. educated the people where we were, right. what was going on, and I think that paid off. I, I think so too, and our numbers, it, we're an urban community, yeah. manufacturing remained open during the process, mm -hmm. Um, we were, uh, City Hall never closed in no. municipal buildings. Maybe you couldn't come in, but we never closed. Yeah. There were people in the buildings, and, um, and, and I think it was pretty seamless. We found ways to get the job done. But I think that was the reason why we saw so many of our cases drop so fast, is oh, yeah. because of the coordination. And, and again, it comes back to emergency management. We had volunteers. It was cold in February, and people, you know, caught the sun and like, yeah, it's not bad out here. I'm like, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's cool. it's worse than bad out here. And and but you, you see the 
you know, the difference uh, oh, yeah. it makes to have, you know, and, and committed even, volunteers. And even during this COVID thing, why was industry working in this town but not other towns? Right. But you had AIS supplying all these different hospitals with right. extra furniture, the... Uh, Military uh, contracts. Uh, we have all the respirator lenses were being made in Lumberstar. Right. All of this extra stuff was being built right here in town. Containers that you Containers, put the, yeah. the, 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 the aggregate of... of um, some of the PPEs, right? Yes. So some of this liquid stuff had to be put in containers where the oh, containers yeah. made right here. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So that, you know, as I was thinking on Labor Day, the workforce was probably scared, right? Mm -hmm. And, well, and they, they are working through the, you know, the, the working through the crisis. But supplying, if we didn't have them, you can make all, I mean, it, you go back to the old days of making your own soda at home or something oh, and yeah. distributing it to your neighbors. But nobody, you know, I mean, if we didn't have them, I can't think of how many others wouldn't have containers to actually put mm hand -hmm. sanitizer in it, yeah. cleaning products and all those things, all made out of plastic. And you think about how much hand sanitizer we gave out. We, uh, we, we got two... 55-gallon drums. two 55-gallon drums and... and um, put them in all little bottles. Yeah, we, we, we uh, put them in little bottles here. We had yeah. our own bottling plant We had plant our own bottling here. plant out back. We bought the bottle. And, and put, uh, that's what I'm saying. I think being... One thing we know here, and that's through experience, because we do have a network of experienced people oh, here yeah. as part of our team, is um, get on it right away. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's get on it, communicate, 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 and do your absolute best. Don't wait for somebody to say, hey, you got to get sand, hand, sand, hand sanitizer. Oh, no, no. So we knew, like, where can we get hand sanitizer? And we're thinking we do a lot of work with yep. a company that supplies us with those porta potties. Yep. So our, our first call was, hey, you happen to know where we can get any hand sanitizer? They're like, yeah, we buy by the drum. And we're like, sure, we can use a few 55-gallon drums Absolutely. of that. Until the industry could catch up. The sure. problem is oh, yeah. you could go to stores all over the place and go online, and nobody had any, anything. To, they didn't have anything to sell. How about PPEs? That's what I'm saying. When, when, the, when this whole thing hit, the end of January, 1st of February, we brought in through one of the volunteers' companies, about $30,000 worth of PPEs. That's the full outfits, hoods, helmets, face shields, eyewear. And the first two days, we outfitted all the rest homes in mm -hmm. Lumberstar. Anyone that didn't have PPEs, we contacted every one of them, outfitted them first. Then we outfitted Lumberstar Fire, Fitchburg Fire, Townsend, Lunenburg, Shirley, all of, all Princeton. All ended up coming here. We issued out probably 4,000 PPEs in a matter of days yeah. and when it's first hit because yeah. nobody had nobody it. Nobody had anything. And, we, and nobody could get it. I remember people calling nursing homes saying, we can't get materials. Right. We can't protect our employees. And right away, I mean, we gave them what we, we could. And, um, in fact, somehow the word got out that we were helping everybody out. And Quincy Fire and Police called here. And we don't know how you guys are doing it. But we don't have anything, so we haven't outfitted them. So. You're watching Inside Lumminster. My name is Dean Mazzarella, Mayor for the City of Lumminster. And uh, yes, we are sort of reminiscing here, but uh, yep. of, of something that still continues on. But it is uh, part of our follow up, really, to sort of see where we can improve, and that's what it's all about. Um, for our emergency management, it isn't, uh, it's interesting because they were about a Less than a year ago, you were preparing for a pandemic. Oh, absolutely. We Is that were, December or November? We were, we were in, in December, we were running tabletop drills on the pandemic, and I had some of my volunteers looking at me saying, what the hell are yeah, you doing? Yeah, what is that? I mean, come what on, now, you, now you're wasting our time, right? And I remember the day you called, you says, Jim, are we going to be ready with a, with a plan for this? I go, let's send it right over to you. Yeah, and you did. And I was like, oh, that's right. We did this pandemic planning that it's hard to get. When you're doing tabletop exercises, oh, it's yeah. hard to get people to imagine you know, a trail derailment, and oh, yeah. you know it's hard to, to picture those things, but yep. but we've had them all. We've had we've plane them. crashes and oh, trail yeah. derailments, several and plane crashes, rollovers yep. from oil tankers, and you know blocking streets and highways. We've had the Route 13 bridge closed down because yep. uh, the main water line or sewer line broke or the gas line broke. I mean, we've had all of those emergencies oh, yeah. and ice storms and snowstorms. So for us, it's not. It's just being prepared because it's just yeah. a matter of time. 
Yeah, I, I, my motto is prepare for the worst and hope you don't have to use it. Yeah. And I think that's yours too. Absolutely. Like, hey, we can always put it away. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? We can always freeze it, as they say, right? We bought too much of this. Well, we'll just have to freeze it. But being prepared is, is an absolute necessity today. And it's unfortunate oh, yeah. that other communities that didn't, you know, there are, you know, I get those interactions constantly about, you know, it's too bad our community didn't take didn't um, take this uh, more seriously. Seriously, yeah. Uh, 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 other, just taking emergency management um, mm -hmm. more seriously because a lot of communities have called fire departments or whatever it might yeah. be, but the taxpayers alone has made a, a significant event, investment here, but also all of the free labor that we got, donations. So this building's probably worth a couple million dollars right oh, now, and oh, we paid absolutely. We paid peanuts Three, for $300, it. $300,000 yeah, for this peanuts. building. Yeah. And, and you see what's donations, here. right? Donations is over four hundred thousand. And the building's probably assessed at a couple million dollars. Oh, at this easy. Particular point. And, and f in fact, Sheriff Evelitis was here a few months ago. He gave gave a tour because, as you know, we use some of the sure, community, community service yep. program for painting and cleaning here. And uh, he went through. He goes, I just can't believe what you got here because he says I went through other EOCs like in Worcester. He says you have more, but you paid a tenth of right. what they did. Right. Yeah, they contracted out, bid it all out. They did. And so the taxpayers made an investment and didn't complain because they understood the importance of when and it, you know, it's you know the saying of it's not when, it's if. Oh, it's something if. happens, oh, yeah. we want to be prepared and, and in every situation we've been able to do that and, and do it successfully. When we had the ice storms and everything, first to get our electricity back uh, on. First, and, yeah. Because we and could pave the we could get tree cutters to that are certified to cut around lines. That way, National Grid can restore the power. I still remember that at night because it was like two o'clock in the morning, and you said, "When people wake up in the morning, I want them to hear chainsaws, yeah. trucks, bobcats, bobcats, and, yeah, and equipment." <laughs> I want everybody to know that we're on this. And I think he was—he's retired now, but he was said to Ralph Person, "I don't care where you get those trucks." Yeah. And he had them coming in from New Jersey. Everywhere. We're on the uh, phone, Virginia. Virginia. From, I remember crews pulling up at 6 o'clock at night because it took them that whole day to get here. Right. And they're like, I said, you guys need to rest. And they're like, no, we're ready to go to work. And just uh, all night long, chainsaws and these bobcats that just picked every, all the brush up and, f and fed them into these giant chippers. Right. And uh, off they went. And I think the other thing that happened is a little bit of confusion from MEMA. And because they wanted everything to go through them, but they weren't really organized to be able to do that. So once I realized that happened, we got on the phone next day and I yeah. called all the mayors yeah. who weren't impacted by the ice storm. And I said, can you send chippers and bobcats and help? And I remember seeing these giant generators coming in from yeah. Boston and Quincy yeah. and, and Waltham and, and Braintree. And they came from everywhere. You know, tree, and people call and say, there's a crew in front of my house from, from Braintree. And I said, Braintree, yep. yep. Everybody sent something. Oh, yeah. The, the cooperation was amazing. It was kind of fun to watch, actually. It's fun to watch now. Now. At the time. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I tell the story seldom, but <laughs> when I knew this was serious is when I made my way to the top of one of our hills here in Lummis, I could actually make my way. I could actually get oh, yeah. up. And I went to the top of the hill, and I could only see just a few lights on the south side. And that would be that area near the Sunoco Central oh, yeah. Street area. Yep. Still had power. I don't know why. I don't. <laughs> Came from the substation. That, that from, was about ah, it. It's one of those things that when your power goes out in your house, but yep. it, all of a sudden there's one plug that's still alive. You're like, where's that coming from? And I just remember looking saying, this yep. is one of those, Houston, we have a problem here. The <laughs> whole grid was out. But the second yeah. storm was actually worse, which is the snowstorm of Halloween. Because oh, yes. this affected the grid. Yeah. So I mm -hmm. was looking out again saying, the city's out again. But then when I talked to representatives from National Grid, they said, but what's different about this is we got problems at the grid. In mm -hmm. other words, out in Sterling, those, those, those oh, yeah. substations, the substation. that's where the power comes in. Yeah. Well, you can fix all the lines you want in the city, but until that's fixed, you no one's going to have power. But we still could work on, the, you know, we could still prepare for it so that once oh, it was yeah. up. But these yeah. storms were nothing I ever remember growing up. Blizzard of 78 certainly impacted us, oh, yeah? but it, the sun came out. You know, I mean, it, it was like back-to-back -back storms. It, it did. It, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever it was, and we shut down for a long time. But yeah. at the end of the day, we, we, the sun came out, yeah. things melted. It wasn't a two- or three-week episode. And having a, an, an emergency operation like we got here, I remember on the second or third night, 
We had the National Grid was here like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, the deputy fire chief's here, and she goes, I'm moving all of the trucks out of this area of Whitney Street. He says, what about the corner of Whitney where the big complex is? She goes, well, there's only one meter there. He says, yeah, for about 300 people. Wow. <laughs> so she shifted right from here. So it showed that having all the people to communicate paid off. Yeah, no, and, and it got us direct resources. Like, we're not sitting around waiting for somebody to tell us what to do here. Oh, no, no. We already have a plan. We're going to work. And, uh, and that's the way we we dealt with um, COVID. And um, as you said, we had Tyvek outfits and things oh. people just could not get. They were making, I remember people making shields with duct tape and all those things. Yeah. And right away, you know, people went to work. But let's talk, shift gears for just a second. Um, and, and discuss a little bit about other opportunities here for people mm. who might be interested in volunteering. Sure. First of all, they can call and just come down for a tour. Uh, the best thing to do is come down for a tour because when you look at the outside of the building, form a potato chip factory, mm. and then you come inside, it's amazing what's here. Mm. Really amazing. And so um, anyone that's interested, come on down, give you a tour. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities between communication and operations and training sessions. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Yeah, Every day absolutely. is going on. But there's, but there's so many. Before it used to be rescue. I mean, you, you know, there was an umbrella. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But now the umbrella's gotten a lot bigger because there's oh, yeah. so much more. There's yep. so many more skills that can be used. And emergency management isn't just for, you know, in other words, if you sign up and you have a, a very specialized uh, skill. Or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or training it doesn't mean that you have to be here every day or oh, yeah. once. You, so they'll obviously keep you up and put you through the regular training. But you'll have knowledge already when an incident happens and we need that talent or that expertise. We make the phone call and activate you. Doesn't mean that you have to give you know 500 hours a, a year oh, it, no. it, you know, because p things are becoming so much more specialized today. Now we got the you know the, the canteen service for the fires. We've been on six runs in the last eight weeks. You no, know, some in town, some out of town, some in Fitchburg towns, right. and all over. But that's an active unit, and we just got a new truck, as know. you know, from yeah. Homeland that was Security. Hundred thousand something. Hundred twenty-five thousand dollar truck, zero to the city. Amazing! It's a beautiful resource. You can explain. We go out to fires or oh, yeah. anytime police or fire or rescue people might be out for an extended time. Right. Uh, in this town, which is kind of unusual, if there's a major fire, we work real close with fire prevention, and we move all the people right here because sometimes it's two, three, four hours before a ride cross gets right. here. So we get the people um, calmed down. We have um, teddy bears and things for the little kids. Beds, cots. Beds, cots, food. We have food. a full <laughs> certified kitchen back there. Oh, yeah. And uh, going to operate. And one of the things, and what started that is, I remember going to a fire on Colburn Court or off of Colburn Street. Oh, yeah, Colburn, yeah. And it was a big apartment complex. And I just remember, it, it, you know, the, the police and fire were trying to understand who was in the building, and people had scattered, you know, and then friends start showing up and yeah. relatives and hugging, you know. I get it. But it's a very traumatic time. In the meantime, little kids are watching their house burn, and mm -hmm. that's traumatic. That's something that oh, yeah. takes years to, 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 to erase. So our thing is let's gather everybody. There is no benefit to have them there. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we know who's who's supposed to be there, mm -hmm. who isn't there. But you know, it, it, so we don't get misinformation. Like, is, so that you make a clean sweep. The fire department is going to want to go in and make sure that nobody's still in the building. Yep. But that means you know pets and other things. So that's important. Oh yeah, we bring the pets right in. Here. Right. It could be a crime scene, so they yeah. want to talk to witnesses. So they're yep. this way. You know, we send our bus out, we pick everybody up, yep. we bring them all down here, yep. and they're out of the elements. It's yeah. never a nice night or day when there's oh, a no. fire, unfortunately, and so we can get them here. And sometimes they ran out of the building and maybe a neighbor gave them a blanket. But uh, The last few fires, they did just that, and they, we got them here. We had clothes, we had shoes. Um, we could get them set up. Suits. We could get them set up in hotels oh, yeah. right away. And then the Red, Red Cross, they're a, an agency that operates by region, but it could take a while before they get out here to start the process. Yeah, because they've spread out so far now, sure. it takes three, four hours before they get here. But they they do give them a stipend once sure. they get here. But why make them wait 
oh, for yeah, three, it's... four, five hours till they could get people here. Yeah. So now we're able to assemble them, bring them here, bring them away from what, what's going on and what happened, get yeah. those kids, you know, they're watching TV, there's some games here, there's some things for them to do. And they charge their phones, whatever's oh, going yeah, on. Whatever it takes. In fact, if they have no phones, and we had two cases where the phones were caught in the fire and burned, and we, we keep in the office there these track phones. Mm. And we, we give them that phone to use so we can communicate with them until they get on their feet. Right. And then they give the phone back. Right. And, that, and that continues on even after oh, yeah. the Red Cross leaves. Eventually yep. the Red Cross has to leave, but sometimes people need help getting an apartment or they need mm -hmm. help getting furnishings. And so we have all yep. those contacts where we can get brand new oh, yeah. furniture for them if they it. need to. It is amazing. Almost every one of those people that I know of in the last few years that have been burned out are better off today than they were before. You're watching Inside Lemonster, and we're doing uh, a remote today where we are uh, taping from uh, 37 Carter Street, which is our emergency management center, and this is the uh, uh, EOPS, what we call the Emergency Operations Center, and uh, it's critical every day of the week, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's an ongoing mission. This is a very busy building. We use it for uh, citywide training. Mm -hmm. We use it for nonprofit groups use this. Yeah, yeah. Other state agencies, yeah. other military groups use this. We, yeah. We've lost count of zero days when um, this building, well, as you said Book, yesterday. Booked out 80, 85 percent of every month. And gets good use, and it mm -hmm. allows us to collaborate with mm -hmm. other agencies and departments within the city, building good good relationships with those that, agencies. We, we have a kitchen here that's basically... Um, it's a restaurant, not a kitchen. It, it's basically... Show, so show and Fabs use it all week right. to make jellies and things right. out here. And, and what a great, great resource that is. So this has been a uh, ongoing effort. And again, if you're interested at all, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to watch the time for you guys, but uh, if you're interested at all, um, if, if you could... Um, let us know and come down. It'll take you for a little tour, show you the different pieces of this. Yep. Um, there's radio and dispatch, but we need people that work on radios. We've had people oh, that yeah. actually can tear these things apart and put them back together. Ham operators in the event that something happens. And remember, we in Haiti, I remember there was, you know, the, the, what happened out in Haiti. I remember people were able to communicate from here yes. uh, to their relatives uh, In out fact, there. as you mentioned that, Molly Bish, when we did the search some years ago originally, the where it was situated, the radios, because it was in a valley, and they didn't have any radio communications. So our ham operator picked up from a ham operator at the scene, and we were the link for communication. Amazing. Just amazing. We, we basically run a ham radio check every Sunday morning, every week. Amazing, huh? And there's such hardcore volunteers that oh, come geez, yeah. That they know exactly what they're doing. And, and, uh... and there's an, another thing, because of COVID, we set it up. If the fire department, say the um, 911 dispatch center got contaminated with COVID, we have a full, complete backup system for the full dispatch center set up here. And not only do we have it set up, we also had a loop where we could bring the 911 calls into here if we had to. So we got all of that set up, and just in case. We can do, um, we can hit a switch and we're on, uh... We're on cable TV. Oh, cable TV, uh, Facebook. Everything. You, you just hit that dashboard on, on that new system we got out there. and oh, you, you go. And you got, you're broadcasting everywhere. Yeah. And it's, it's not um, the old days. It was either word of mouth. Uh, I remember some things happening, and the PD was riding around with microphones and bullhorns and, oh, bull you know, those. I remember, I forget oh, what yeah. the situations were, but yeah. today we have code red. And yep. you can tune into WLPZ, our radio station. Sonny's been great about activating that from oh, either yeah. home or, or from there to let people know what's going on. 2015, during all those storms, uh, it, was it 2015? Well, whenever we first got our yeah. license, oh, yeah. we were broadcasting the top floor of the Gallagher building with a little, a little, I, I remember a, that. A little small microphone and a little transmitter, <clears throat> and we were broadcasting. So people would know what's going on, and we're also doing testing because we wanted to know what part of the city sure. people could hear us from. And we would get calls from all over the place saying, you know, hey, what's going on? And storm's coming in, and here's what you can expect, and here's what's closed and open. And, uh, you know, the days of we had our own radio station in Lemus, the WLMS, oh, yeah. at the time. And, uh, and, and, and now we have our own radio station that we can control. So it's not easy all the time to get somebody from a radio station to go in oh. on a weekend 
or night to update people as to what's going on. We can do it perfectly here. So communication well, yeah. has been our uh, champion. That, that code red is so important. In fact, it wasn't that long ago we had that armed intruder on Lancaster right. Street. Police Department, I remember uh, John Freer called and he says, I need to isolate this area of town and notify the people of what's going on. I want this street, I gave us seven streets within right. a matter of minutes. We notified, we notified everybody in that little square of what was going on. So they know on what's what going do. on and, and uh, they know that we might be looking for somebody in here yep, who you're looking in for. In-house sheltering and uh, this is the person we're looking for. Right, amazing. Uh, uh, Jim LeBlanc is the... Uh, Director here at uh, Emergency Management, and uh, is, is how many years uh, have you been at this? <laughs> here now, fifty-five years. Fifty-five years. Fifty-three and, as a volunteer, and two years as a when paid, I, when paid I was a employee. Kid, when I was a little kid. I lived over here, next street over on Sixth Street, <laughs> and I take my bike. And they used to meet on Tuesdays, I think. That's emergency. correct. Over on Jerome. On Jerome Place, there was a building. It still amazes me, me that. That building was so big. I mean, it was. Oh. How did that building get there? There's like every house is built on small. Then there's this giant, not giant, but. And, but and it goes around it behind goes around. the house. Behind yeah. the house. And that was the emergency, but the civil defense building at the it time. It was civil defense back then, yeah. And some old kind of equipment that was kept together oh, by volunteers. <laughs> we had great day. <laughs> it was bad. And then we went off to, uh, where did we go from there? To Lancaster Street? Yeah, Lancaster Street, yeah. Well, we st I thought we were well, one we, yeah. place first. Yeah, we, we did. We were we were using people's garages, yeah. and they had yeah. the fields uh, and, uh, where Greg Shep, uh, where Greg is now down at City Hall. That was the office for the director. Yeah. Oh yeah, we were spread all over the place. And then we went to Lancaster Street, the old yeah. fire station. Yeah. Until it got We stayed condemned. there for for some years. Yeah. And uh, then it got renovated into the um, into the auto parts place. Yeah. Right. And and then we uh, and, and then we came here when yeah. we didn't have any access for disability or, or anybody oh, yeah. that, that needed access to the building couldn't really get this it, is so. amazing that but this building was bought for three hundred thousand right, dollars that's what i say at the time getting by a house nobody for that. complained <laughs> nobody complained because they knew the amount of volunteerism and and yeah. how many years you know guys like dick garvin and all the people that yeah. had been here for so many years they looked at it as heck for every dollar we give them, they're bringing back, you know, 8, 10, 15, yeah. all the grants that, you, you know, EMA and emergency management and Wendy have put together for reimbursements. Yeah. Uh, those are things that, that and, and you saw matter. The, you saw the new city director's car? Yes. That was paid for half of it by the state. Right. How, uh, what, what a deal such, that was. What an opportunity to... to, to. So the messages were prepared, but we're always looking for volunteers. Yeah. Uh, we have... Um, you know, the capabilities between police and fire and DPW and other departments in the city. Um, we had our purchasing agent here during all of our storms. Yeah, so in the that middle we of the night. Track, yeah, <laughs> we track everything. Make sure everything. we keep track of everything we spent. Yeah, right. And uh, there are government regulations in terms of um, how much you can spend yep. and when you can spend it yep. and bidding, per, you know, procedures. And so it, it, those are all things that you have to follow. The, when I was amazed the first time where federal government was like, no, we want every... If they're loading a truck with chips, because they say they chipped them up here, yep. we want a full accounting of those chips. Yep. And uh, and 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 we want to know how many trucks were filled, how many, trucks how many weight, tons, uh, oh yeah, everything. I mean, they're not just going to hand out money. Oh no. And if you don't have a good record keeping system, they're just not going to help. And we would, we got the highest amount of money back yep. in the shortest amount of time. Because of our paperwork and the, and the way we're set up of any so city we are in the ready, area. but we need to always be ready, and that might be an opportunity for for you or somebody you know to get involved. There might be college students that oh, yeah. are um, back home. Maybe they're taking a year off. Maybe there's an opportunity to come here and share your skill. Uh, Tyler Yalen, uh, we started Tyler. a program in 2015, giving out buckets of sand. Yeah, and Tyler's re resurrected that program. He did. So him and his father, I guess, are going to yeah. do emergency management. Yeah, We've got buckets donated. Sand for seniors. Gonna, <laughs> Fill them up and then deliver them. So, uh, yeah. you know, it's one of the. It's a. It, it might not seem like a big thing, but people break hips in the winter, and you know, money oh, yeah. to get the mail. Or they want to, you know, sometimes elderly don't like to bother anybody. They feel yeah. they're bothering people. So that's when they go yeah, that out. That was and great they fall. initiative on their part. Yeah. So they're going to resurrect that. We did yeah. it in 2015. We still have yeah. some buckets around the building still. Yeah, that's this. But um, now we'll have them. They'll be running the show here. We'll go out. We'll. Yeah. We'll get those buckets back out to you before the snow flies, and yeah. uh, you'll have some, you know, a mixture of sand and salt. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, for those times when you need to, to uh, oh, yeah. stay safe, right? The last thing you want to do is fall because that's, oh, yeah. that, that's the last thing anybody wants to do, but especially for somebody that's elderly that, uh, you know, you might know be Another frail. thing a lot of people may not realize is, is what we had built with that um, unified command trailer. Right. And, right. and when we had the protest in Lemista, that was the central point yeah, it's of like, our, yeah, let's get that thing out here. Everything was, it was coordinated. The center. It was exactly yeah. what it was. Yeah, it was. And it worked perfectly. you got to have the ability to do that and set up. All of our festivals, volunteers yep. show up. You never yep. know when something might happen, but, mm -hmm. you know, just first aid, kid tripped on, oh, yeah. you know, scraped oh, yeah. his knee. Or sometimes it's hot, you know, the summer oh, stroll yeah. or whatever it might be. And, and uh, you know, you have somebody there as a Yeah, as we a have a medic. full EMS unit there that helps out in those types of events. Yeah. We are um, kicking into the fall season. And uh, Joanne has said that they've had a great season so far up at Sholin. We've had nice yeah. weekends. I'm just going to check the weather for this weekend. I, I think it looks like things are going to cool off. But let me just check here. Uh, what's it under? Okay. It's under the business now. They put uh -huh. all the, oh, somehow yeah. or another, Facebook took anything related to business, what they classify yeah. as business, mm -hmm. and stuck it in there. Sometimes you have to go looking for it. It's like, I didn't know where it was. But um, let's see. Let's look at those. Um, so it looks like tomorrow, Friday the 11th, September 11th, is, um, you know, basically a uh, 74 degrees, and Saturday another uh, 71 degrees, so this is apple oh, picking this, weather. Oh, this is good uh, stuff. A stray shower, shower maybe on Sunday, but this is like they're open seven days a week uh, till five, and this is perfect weather, and oh, yeah. they have so many varieties. Joanne was saying on our show when we taped it a couple weeks ago, like 35 different varieties. They, they come in the other day with some apples. I couldn't believe oh, the Oh, they're app. like pumpkins. And you know, <laughs> there is there are out in Pennsylvania, they don't have any pumpkins yet. Oh. We had our pumpkins like two weeks ago, and they're yeah. coming Huge. fast. Yeah. Gourds, anything you need. And remember, sometimes people say, well, geez, I can get apples cheaper at Walmart. And I'm like, well, I know, but it's supporting your, you own a farm. If you're a resident here in the city of Lemonson, mm -hmm. you own a farm. So this is your way of supporting. When I go up there and I spend 50 bucks or whatever I spend, yeah. it's not because I needed all this stuff. I mean, I take it, it's I give it to other people, I spread it around, yeah. I take the gourds, I bring them to my store and decorate it, we bring them back to City Hall. It's because I'm trying to support sure. our orchard, right? Sure. And so I look and, and uh, sometimes, you know, I buy apples and I'm not even sure who to give them to. Like, who needs apples? <laughs> hey, anybody need apples? But it's a great place and it's one of the few orchards that you can uh, visit seven days a week unless we're spraying yeah. at your orchard and we always wanted to keep it that way. It's awesome up and there. And it's, it's grassroots, it's grassroots driven and they obviously need it. Uh, volunteers as well, but yeah. this is like the perfect time for for that. Uh, they still had some blueberries, weren't many left, but peaches and just a perfect place to come. And so remember that. I know people go to other orchards and stuff at occasion. I get that, but remember this is but, your orchard. But this orchard overlooks the oh, city. <laughs> it just overlooks everything. There's few other orchards that are like oh, this, and I've seen some awesome. beautiful places, but nothing yeah. like this. And no, it's, trails, it's, and it's become the hub, and Joanna said they've had a couple of great weekends up there, and, yeah. and they need it because oh, yeah. they have to, you know, there's a lot of expenses to, to uh, you know, operate oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that, that and, oh, oh yeah. it's very expensive, and, yeah. and so that, and uh, this Saturday is the 12th, and I say this because it's taped and we'll be playing it at different times. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to start out there looking for yard sales on the uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, you know, 19th, but on the 12th uh, are going to be a, uh, a citywide yard sale. So if you mm -hmm. call our office and see this today or tonight, 534-7500, extension zero, we'll get you on there. And it's interactive. It'll be on a, we have a map on our Facebook page, Lemister Community Development Facebook page. And mm -hmm. then you can go see them all. Yep. Oh, yeah. Jimmy, you could go see every yard sale that there is oh, uh, on Saturday. And then on Saturday, uh, Mrs. Schofield is going to be 108 years old. No They're way. They're celebrating her. Now, Louie was 104. Yeah. And I don't remember anyone. 108. I, I think this might be. Seems be the record. I think so. I don't recall anyone um, being... Um, the oldest resident being 108 years old, as far back as we can 
fine. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? That, that's truly this amazing. Schofield and, I can't imagine being that old. I can't. I'm taking it one week at a time here, thinking, you know, my knee hurts. And <laughs> imagine 108 years. No way. Yeah. And, and, oh, and, that's and, crazy. Yeah, so that's, that's some planning for oh, us yeah. to do if we're going to be around until 108. Oh, These yeah. guys, Bradley and Keith, yeah. I mean, I said this at graduation. You're going to be around the, the class that just graduated, 2020. Yeah. They're, they're going to be around. I mean, oh, yeah. 95 to 100 will be every day, but most of them. So that means they've got some planning to do. They've got yeah. a, they, you've got some, you need to get a life insurance policy. You need to get an IRA, right? Oh, you yeah, need absolutely. To start, yeah, you need to start putting some coin away because if you don't, uh, you're, you're, uh, uh, you won't make it. <laughs> it well, it, I, I can't imagine a pension program keeping up with that. I can't imagine no. a, uh, you know, I can't imagine no. a, uh, a health care plan that can keep up with that. No. And then Social Security. Yeah. I mean, if just 20 years, if everybody's uh, 20, 40, and everybody's living till 90 or 100, and they're mm -hmm. retiring, you know, yeah. 65, 72, uh, 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 so eventually... <laughs> It won't keep up. No, it's just no, remarkable. Well, so, well. we are trying. We're we're trying to organize uh, Halloween. We I know some places have already canceled it. We're hoping the state will allow us to have it, but we're we haven't canceled it because we do think there is a way to pull it off safely. Yeah. And so we we're they, in, they're, they're wearing masks <laughs> exactly, but we're engaging. You know, we're getting the community to start talking about it. And from when you have conversations, good ideas come. Oh yeah, right. You, and you know how my house is usually set up for yes, Halloween. Yes, corner of Washington Street. <laughs> Wash looks yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spooky I, I, world. I, 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 well, not only do people love decorating, but having the kids come to the house. So, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I, I mean, it, 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 there are a couple ways to do it. You could put candy out front. Oh yeah. And and then just. You know, remain or keep it, you know, 10 feet from the house, but still give a wave when the kids oh, yeah. come and the kids yeah, can yeah. take a piece of candy or whatever. And, you know, you have your, a little bit of a line going in if it's a house that gets a lot of attention. So you have a, a line going in. I mean, I mean, I got ice cream the other day. Everybody's so programmed, like so programmed to, to everybody keeps automatically without even looking on the ground. They got it all late. Oh, yeah. They just keep their distance, people oh, yeah. keep their mask on. Yeah, when they get their sense. ice cream, they go back to their car or they go back to a remote area. I mean, 99% oh, yeah. of the population's got this down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we've been in training now since, since spring training started in February around First here. of February. We got this down. Uh, oh, yeah. Saw a couple bus tours out there this past week. Yeah. And uh, that was interesting because they, they've got it all. The churches, if you go into church, St. Cecilia's has got this whole thing you know, roped off. Here's where you can sit. Here's where you can't. It's all spread out. But yeah, it's it, it, it's it's a good thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. about time we get back to uh, living our lives normal. Well, it's to me, it's not a big deal anymore. No, I don't. I mean, some things get. You know, like I, I was saying the other day, some of these fast food and donut places and stuff. Yep. I stopped at what, a Wendy's, not here in town, but I was traveling, so I had to stop at a Wendy's. Yeah. And uh, completely closed, only to t open to takeout. So. No dining, no, uh, no, no bathrooms. And the same thing I've been seeing with donut places and coffee yeah. places, yep. they've shut down. I mean, you can open, I mean, didn't they get the memo you can open? But oh, yeah. I think they're looking at it saying, you know what? There's an expense for us, and this is our way out of it. They got the bathrooms closed. They have the dining areas. And let's face it, sometimes people hang around the coffee yeah. places, and now they can just say, you know what? Either come in and order it or, and take it out with you, order it online, or you can do the drive up. So... It's time to open these bathrooms and. Well, Home Home Depot and Walmart have broken every sales record. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's. <laughs> I saw my first Target brochure last weekend. They clearly haven't had to to deal with any of that. They haven't yeah. advertised anything, right? You just and yeah. and yeah, it's been interesting. You can't even find a parking spot in no. Home Depot. And it's sad because a lot of the th local businesses, a lot of small local businesses, small. couldn't open. Right. Well, at the same time when they could open because they had things that were essential, yeah. but uh, other places couldn't open. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you could buy the same product that they sell at your small local business there. And that's unfortunate how it yeah. all worked out. But yeah, things is. are, for the most part, back. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, very seldom does I see something that's surprising. I, I can uh. live with it all. So we're going to try to pull off, um, 
you know, Halloween and, and maybe ladies' night out during the yeah. fall where yeah. it's different restaurants that are participating. Sure. Restaurants have done a great job. They have. Uh, somebody called me the, the just last night, late, uh, last, I don't know, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and said they go to Global Gym. Yeah. And, and we've done a couple shows from there and said, it was a doctor that said this. It said they have gone not only above, but way above and beyond what was necessary, and so have many of the other health clubs in town uh, yeah. so that they could open to their members, really have gone that extra distance. As you mentioned, doctor, remember what the dentist did in the whole city? Yeah. They pooled all, all their, their supplies, supplies and they brought all the supplies here down here so that so we, we could, could share. share. Amazing, huh? And yeah. that's the story that someday we'll put all the pictures together oh, and yeah. we'll have Keith or Bradley to hopefully to put them yeah, together for us. But this should be... This should be in, you know, part of the historic. Oh, yeah. This should be part of the, part of the recorded history of of uh, something that happened. There wasn't much to go on in the last pandemic. Yeah. You know, it wasn't 1918? much. 1918. Yeah, there was some pictures and some yeah, things. Yeah, whole, whole streets next to us. They lost right. whole families. Yes, but we didn't have much to go on. And no. today we have so much technology. Oh, yeah. We need to kind of put it all together and, and yeah. wrap it up. And so that we, you know, generations from now, they'll be able to look back and say, wow, that pandemic of 2020. I had to do uh, a... You see Bradley's shirt over there? You see what it says? Oh, yeah. I had the last year. To... What do you think, Bradley? What's it say? Oh, yeah. Let me see. It's a Boys State shirt because we weren't allowed to hold our, uh, oh, yeah. our Boys State program this year. Yeah. yeah. Too bad, huh? So, but well, it's also appropriate for anything. But, oh, you know, yeah. it's strange because 2020... How much, how much time have we got, guys? Less than five. Okay. About four minutes. Four minutes. So 2020, like, I thought 2020 was like, remember 2000? Although oh, yeah. 20, 2000. I remember 2000. Was, well, only because all the it, computers it was, were going to die. Computers were gonna die. I, I, it, we were all like staring at, like, we had first night and we all ran into my office and everybody was just like staring at the phones and the computers. Like, yeah. we thought maybe, that, and we did. We started back in September when Charlie was here going out to different groups and explaining this might happen, what does yep. that mean if it mm -hmm. happens, it, we're yeah. here in case it happens, could there be a military attack if this happens? All of those things were sort of circulating, but, um, but this was supposed to be like 2020, what a cool thing, right? Mm -hmm. well, 2020, the yep. kids that were gonna graduate from college or whatever it was, yep. 2020, just kind of like we made history by yep. 2020. The census, 2020, all these things were going to happen in celebrations to 2020. And instead, what we got is a challenge. <laughs> right? challenged? We got challenged in 2020. Maybe that was the, that was maybe this was the year of the challenges to see how we would uh, do yeah. in a, in a civilized society with so much technology around us. What would we do uh, with it? And uh, and and so that's why we want to bundle us all and tell the story and put pictures together. Well, I'll tell you, Mima contacted me there about a month ago. They said, have you put together an after action report on everything in COVID? Right. I had done it. Right. He goes, you guys are so far ahead. Well, of we started day. a lot earlier too, he right? He says, I, there ain't nobody that came close to you well, guys. <laughs> that's what it's all about. We're sort of running out of time here. Thank yeah. you to Bradley and Keith for putting this together. The bells will go off soon at St. Cecilia's. Oh, they will. And you that's how we build the time down here at 37 Carter Street for everybody. I was laughing the other day. I'm like, we don't need watches around here. We got whistles that go off. At whistles the fire department. and bells. We got bells. We used to have the the the. Remember the the air raid? Oh yeah. That was over by Economy Paint. I remember when Subway it got is. stuck. <laughs> yeah, it got stuck and they couldn't get it off. Right. And everybody thought something was happening, but right. the old air raid drill. I remember right? that. And they would go off at noon time and they would test that horn. Remember that? Oh uh, yeah, I do remember that. that. Was? It was. Anyway, we're out of time here at Inside Lumberstone. Yep. Uh, Jim LeBlanc has been my guest. He's the director here at Emergency Management. We are at 37 Carter Street. If you need any help at all, never, never, uh, you know, never feel that you can't, uh, you know, reach out. And then if you're interested in, in volunteering or being part of the organization, uh, we can certainly use you. Want to give the phone number to reach us here? 978-534-7580. In fact, a lot of retirees are joining for the Neighborhood Watch Cop. That's awesome. That's right. We forgot to mention that. Yeah. There's so many as aspects of this. We're out of time. Thank you. Good night. Remember, the world is run by those who show up. You need to show up. Good night. Have a good night.